good morning. I'm Paula Stewart, the pastor of Clough United Methodist Church, and I'll be leading this online worship this morning. But before I do, I would just like to acknowledge the team that has been here uh, diligently and faithfully uh, leading and bringing this worship experience. So first of all, I want to thank Jason, who has been recording and editing uh, the worship service, and then Robin, Betty, Leah, Audrey, and John, who have been singing in the praise team, and then Brian, Irene, and then Amy, who's been uh, in, the, in the booth, making sure that the slides and the, and the sound uh, is on point. So just wanted you to know that this is just not me. This is a team effort to bring worship. So we want to welcome you then to this time of online worship with Club United Methodist Church. This is how we worship now, uh, online and on time, amen. So let us come before the Lord with minds open to his truth and hearts receptive to his love and with, his, with will subject to his spirit, amen. So join our opening song, Let It Rise.
that your word will be our God, your love will be our comfort, and your promises will be our hope. Amen and amen. Now we have a scripture reading. Good morning. Our scripture today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 17, verses 1 through 11. And I'll be reading from the Common English Bible. When Jesus finished saying these things, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the time has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son can glorify you. You gave him authority over everyone so that he could give eternal life to everyone you gave him. This is eternal life, to know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you sent. I have glorified you on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. Now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I shared with you before the world was created. I have revealed your name to the people you gave me from this world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes to you, comes from you. This is because I gave them the words that you gave me, and they received them. They truly understood that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I'm praying for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those you gave me, because they are yours. Everything that is mine is yours, and everything that is yours is mine. I have been glorified in them. I'm no longer in the world, but they are in the world, even as I'm coming to you. Holy Father, watch over them in your name, the name you gave me, that they will be one just as we are one. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And next we will have the praise team singing Glorious Day.
this day, that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you. In Jesus' name we pray. So today is the last Sunday of our sermon series, Chosen and Precious. And this morning, the title of the sermon is Showing the Glory of Christ in Us. Glory. That's what Jesus' prayer is about in this gospel here in John. Glory. Glorify your son, Jesus prays. It's chapter 17, almost the end of that gospel. And we are coming to the, the climax, to the end toward which the whole event was aiming from the philosophical beginning and the first miracle with water into wine and the wonder that ensued. Glorify your son. Your son, he prays. Not me. He doesn't pray, glorify me, which is what you expect. It was just a prayer between Jesus and his father. No, it's not just a prayer. It's a sermon, an announcement, a, a word of encouragement for those who are about to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It's not a prayer like we understand prayers. It's, it's a pastoral prayer where the pastor prays words that the congregation doesn't have words to pray. But they can nod along as those are exactly the words they were longing to say. Jesus prays like that for them and for himself too. But through him and through his life and his, and his suffering and his death, he prays for them. He puts the words in their mouths. And of course, the prayer could be a construct. I mean, since the Gospel of John was written many, many years after the event, this prayer could be a prayer made up of prayers of the church, of leaders and followers and hopes and dreams. It could be a prayer that was really a theological treatise on the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus. Glorify your Son as a way to explain to those who come after the event what it all means. But then again, maybe Jesus prayed this way for those who haven't yet made it through so that they had a word to hang on to when the wind begins to howl and, and the rain begins to fall and, and a word to cling to when the ground trembles and the temple shakes. Glory. I listened to the amazing uh, Oscar-winning uh, original song by John Legend and Common from the movie Selma, entitled Glory. So moving. It begins, one day when the glory comes, it will be ours, it will be ours. Oh, one day. When the war is won, we will be sure, oh glory, glory. See, it's not about completion, but about hope. It's not the victory chant, though victory is assured, glory. It's not that there isn't suffering to come, but that there is redemption to be found, even in the midst of suffering, glory. It's not that everything is good and right and whole, but that goodness and justice and wholeness are in sight. Glory. What a word to have on the tip of our tongues when things seem uncertain. Glory. Well, let's talk about it for a while. Things seem uncertain during this COVID-19 pandemic, and I think we could all agree, amen. Now, a colleague of, uh, of mine shared this on my Facebook feed. He said, churches are essential. We already knew that. Went on to quote this. But when the faithful are scattered in every age due to persecution, disaster, or plague, we persist in worship and service, in sacrament and sacrifice, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, welcoming the stranger, 
being good news for the poor and working to free the captives and the oppressed. Our highest and holy call, calling is to be the church, not go to church. So I, I, I asked this question, looking at the text and, and seeing that, the questions that came to me is, how can I touch people where they hurt during this time of the pandemic? Or ever? How may I pray comfort for every family with an empty chair at the table? I mean, there's so much doing, uh, that's been going on during this pandemic, but I, I saw uh, on the news this morning about a woman in Philadelphia who on her own started feeding children. And she said she started out with 50. She just went to this uh, neighborhood in Philadelphia and she took the children food because she knew that they couldn't get to the school, you know, they were on free and reduced lunch and she knew that they weren't going to have that. At this point, she is now feeding 260 kids. And here's what the situation is. In the community that she's serving, the bus service stopped. There is no grocery store. So they're in a food desert. And so how she's getting the food, I don't know, but maybe it's from a local food bank. But she has rented a U-Haul truck, has filled it with boxes, and she and some volunteers go from home to home delivering food. And there was one woman that, that came out and talked to the, the media. She has seven kids and she's a, 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 a preschool teacher. And she has a car where she says she can't load up all seven kids in the car and she can't just leave the children uh, unaccom uh, unaccompanied. She just can't leave them to go and get food. And so the delivery that this lady make makes all the difference. What, what can we say about that but glory? There are all kinds of stories like that during this pandemic. And then there are the stories of the rising racial discrimination and tension, uh, discrimination and, and hostility toward Asians, discrimination and hostility toward black people and, and people of color. And all we can say is glory. You know, this, this series is called uh, it Chosen and Precious. And as Christians, when we look at people, we must look at them as chosen and precious, just like we are chosen and precious. And as Methodists, we, we believe that you do no harm and you do all the good you can and you stay in love with God and we say glory. And so our heart breaks over the way we are treating one another during this time. Glory. It's not the glory of this world, right? It's not awards and prizes and offers offices and achievements. It's not the glory of celebrity or wealth. No, it's glorifying your son because your son is glorifying you by finishing the work, by accepting the cross, by taking the nails, by breathing through the pain. He was glorifying God by dying. It's, it's true, it sounds barbaric. This is the stumbling block that Paul talks about so much. How does this cruel and painful death give God glory? Wouldn't living be a better way to glorify? Well, yes, it is a better way for us. We are called to live and to hand over our lives to him and to live and to glorify God by the way we live and breathe and act in the world. I'm going to tell you, I, I miss 
having worship and, and seeing members of the congregation and our and our fellowship together. I truly miss that. I'm an extrovert. I get charged up when I see people and, and this has been hard for me. But the point is, is that for me, to glorify God means that I try to keep myself safe so that I can keep others safe during this pandemic. So that I can pray for the congregation and the trials that they're going through. So that when we come out of this, everyone is still intact that's a, that is affiliated with Clough United Methodist Church and our community. We're called to live as the chosen and precious We chose to live fully, to live joyfully, to live united. Jesus' dying prayer is that we might learn to do this living thing together, together. That's how we finish this work that he has given to us, by living fully, joyfully, and united in peace and shalom, with the, the fullness of all that God has in store for us. We can get through this pandemic, people. And we need to be mindful of doing no harm. And we can come back together and worship in our sanctuaries. But we need to do it with the guidance that we do, of not doing any harm. Amen. Our lives give God glory, and therefore that's what we need to do. Because Jesus' death gave God's glory. Because he finished, and we can finish. Because he was faithful, even unto death, we can be faithful in all of life. And give God glory. Remember that we are chosen and precious. Because Jesus was poorer than he had ever been before. He gave away everything, not holding back even the blood of his veins, the breath of his lungs, because he became poor. He was rich in glory. Glorify your son. He prays before those confused and soon to be terrorized disciples. Glorify even in death so that there is glory in life. I glorified you, he says, he prayed, by finishing the work. And a day later, he says, from his place of execution, it is finished. Let us pray. Lord, we sometimes wonder why you bother with us. Throughout history, you have called to humankind to be your witnesses. You have given to each a special blessing, but the historical record reveals the stubborn, selfish responses of your people. We think that we deserve your blessing and don't have to do your will. We have acted in wicked ways far too often. Today you have called us together to hear the words of Jesus as he prayed for his disciples, telling you that his love for them is complete and that he believes in them. We would like to think that we are included in that number, that Jesus prays for us and loves us, and indeed he does. He has given his life for us. Now we are called to give our lives for him, to offer all the good news that God's love is real and powerful. God's healing mercy is for all people. Hallelujah, all people, Lord. We offer our prayers for our families and our friends who are in situations of need, asking God's blessing upon them. We raise our voices in choruses of pleading for you to be present to all your people, creating pathways of peace. Be with us, gracious Lord, as we live into this viral pandemic. 
Help us to witness to the world, not only by our words and our thoughts, but by our actions, that your peace may be known. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. So in response to this word, I have a prayer of confession. Is it possible, Lord, that we get along so well because we never really take a stand? Could it be that people never raise their eyebrows at us simply because we try so hard to conform? Is it conceivable that others never ask about the hope that is in us because the evidence of that hope is not obvious? Could it be that people do not challenge our faith because they are not aware of our faith? If these things are true, Lord, we stand humble before you, begging that you will forgive our timidity and beseeching you to help strengthen the courage of our convictions. Amen and amen. But hear these words of assurance. God loves and forgives us. God loves and forgives us. We are no longer numbered with the wicked, but rather are placed with those whom God has blessed. We are precious. Be a blessing to all whom you meet in God's name. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, today is a special day. We haven't mentioned it much. But tomorrow we will be celebrating Memorial Day. Now, Memorial Day originally was called Declaration Day, and it was so named by a General John Logan. Uh, and May 5th of 1868 was the first day that it was celebrated to honor the soldiers who had died during the American Civil War. But today, this holiday is celebrated on the last Monday in May of each year. It is a commemoration of human courage and a reminder of all those American soldiers who died in a war defending their country. So I have a poem I like to read. It's called, A Day to Remember. This is a day we stop and remember. The soldiers who fought with bravery. Those who shed their blood and lost their lives so our country could live in liberty. This is a day we stop and remember the colors that we love, the red, white, and blue of freedom that fit our country like a glove. White for purity of purpose, red for valor during battle, blue for justice paid to those who threatened us are the gifts our Lord blessed upon our soldiers. There is a day we stop and remember that our people have not died in vain, for after every battle is won, our country's standards ring. So wave a flag, place a flower on a grave, say a prayer of thanks on Memorial Day, for the price of freedom was freely paid. As we get ready for our offering, I would like to remind you that uh, if you have prayer requests for our prayer team, to please call the church and leave a voicemail. It is Chad Daly. Uh, or even write a note and, and send it in. The mail is Chad Daly as well. Um, as we get ready to do the offering, obviously you're not with us right here. <laughs> We're not passing, passing the offering plate. So to make your contributions, uh, please do one of two things, mail the check into the church. That's the simplest and easiest thing. So um, you know, just get out your checkbook and take care of that now as we get, you know, we're getting toward the end of May. So uh, make sure you're meeting your, your pledge for May. And the other way is to go to uh, easytithe.com slash C-U-M-C for Clough United Methodist Church. Uh, and make your contribution online. Once you go to that website, it's a very easy process.
to make uh, the contribution one time or to set it up so that it comes out automatically or once a month or however you want to set it up. Uh, so as God has showered abundant love and grace on us, may we share gifts of love and grace with God's world. And we'll go now to Leah Brewer for special music uh, when you take care of the offering. Mm -hmm.
Christ has loved us and prayed for us, let us go now in peace, bringing Christ's loving words to all we meet, knowing that Christ is within us in all that we do. Amen and amen. <laughs>